war in Ukraine has been a wake-up call across the world, but especially in Europe. Our dependency to fossil fuel is a major factor of vulnerability and now represents an existential threat to Europe. The current energy crisis is redefining the status of fossil fuel, from a conveyor of security and cheap growth, to now causing major instability and vulnerabilities. The latest edition of the World Energy Outlook, published by IAEA, set it clear and loud. Even in its base case stated policy scenario, all fossil fuel will peak or plateau by 2030 and decline by 2050. This will start by coal, followed by gas and oil. We are convinced that despite a short-term whatever-it-takes moment in Europe that has seen some lifetime extension of coal capacities, there will be no turnaround on Europe's progressive exit from coal. To the contrary, Europe has increased its renewable ambition to 45% by 2030, which would account for 70% of the power mix. While on the short term the outlook is more mixed, we are convinced that the energy crisis will act as a catalyst for the energy transition. Europe has committed 1.7 trillion euros when combining Fit for 55 and Repower EU budgets, with the objective to triple our renewable capacities and real gear changes for technologies such as hydrogen and biomethane. Europe is leading the charge, but the US and China are also committing hundreds of billions of dollars to accelerate the transition. An accelerating energy transition, supported by decisive government support, offers tremendous opportunities for investors. The IEA has estimated that clean energy investments need to go from $1 trillion currently to between $3 and $4 trillion in 2030 in a Paris Align scenario. Even in the central stated policy scenario, amounts dedicated to clean energy doubles between now and 2030. This will speed up the financing of climate solutions in both developed and developing economies. Developing economies need to be a priority, especially as currently most of the climate financing is done by governments. Most of the technologies needed to reach the 2030 50% emission reduction objective do exist, and most of them are economically viable. We do have the technologies and we do have the required amount of money. What we need is clear political will with words translated into action. We need government to make a very clear case for activities that contribute positively to the transition. It must start with ending subsidies for fossil fuels that are distorting market signals and creating uneven playing fields for many clean technologies. Individualism and lack of solidarity, as unfortunately we have seen recently with the outcome of COP27. Transitioning away from fossil fuels does require global solidarity and increased financing in the direction of developing countries, both public and private. Developing economies cannot be put in a position of having to choose between eating and breathing, as rightly put by the DRC Environment Minister. Simply put, it means we need a just transition. A just transition between countries depending on their level of development and their responsibility a just transition within countries in order to avoid social havoc and accompany the most vulnerable, and a just transition within our economies, as fossil fuel producers have recorded a huge $2 trillion windfall above their net 2021 net income, while consumers and companies in other sectors are facing soaring energy bills. The economic case for clean energy has been clear for years. Now the geopolitical case is very clear as well. The main obstacle to the energy transition is thus political, and the lack of solidarity and global cooperation is also the key obstacle in solving the current energy and food crisis. It is the case at global level, and it is the case at European level as well. If not a make or break moment, 2023 will certainly set the tone for the rest of the decade. Music